Hi, my name is Ashish and in this video we will see how to deploy a Flask application to AWS Elastic Beanstalk. So let me just quickly log on to the portal and take it from there. I'm going to enter in my password, don't save. It's going to take me to my control. I'm going to search for Elastic Beanstalk. Enter to not have any application set up. My default region is Northern Virginia, which is also US East 1. You can select any region you want. Keep it to default. I think I've got the billing notification. I'm going to check it later. Okay, so let's see what it says. It says prerequisites. Uh, this tutorial assumes that you have some knowledge of Elastic Beanstalk. I showed you a bit of Elastic Beanstalk in the previous videos. If you do not have the knowledge, get to this starter guide provided by Amazon. Okay, we'll have to set up our Python environment. I showed you how to set up the virtual environment and Python environment. So let me just open up the command prompt. Okay, let's say I'm going to make the Python environment under this default directory. So I'm going to type in make dir elastic beanstalk eb dash flask. So I have this. Go under this. Okay, I'm inside this folder. Now it says create and activate a virtual environment named VIRT. So to do this, you should have a Python. So to make sure that you have Python, you will select the version of Python. Then you would have uh, pip also. It will be installed with Python. And you do not, if you do not have Python or pip, then you will have to install it using. And if you do not have virtual env package of the Python, then you will have to make sure you're doing this it says requirement is already installed and it says that you are using the pip version 19.2.1 however version 19.2.2 is available you should consider upgrading via pip the python command it's written here i can do it i can do it later let's leave it for later Okay, then now it says create and activate a virtual environment named VIRT. You can name your virtual environment whatever you want. I'm gonna, it will run the command by the Python package. Python has some inbuilt packages. Virtual environment is one of them, but you have to install and activate it using pip. I created a virtual environment named VIRT using virtual env package. It's installing the set of tools. On its own then I have to only go inside so the virtual environment is done but so if you will see here I have a virtual directory so if I go inside that virtual environment and do dir you'll see these files these are done today 20th of August and these are by, by default installed with that command that I ran this one virtual env virt alrighty so i'm go i'm gonna go inside this bin folder it says go inside over to virt then you will go inside bin then you will run the eirt command i am inside virt i'm gonna do it bin bin is not there so let me just go inside that folder and see how it is doing that VIR, VIR, EV flask, VIRT, see, lib, VIRT bin, library, bin is not here. I have to make sure that I have to use activate.ps1 script to activate this virtual environment. And it, I don't know why they have mentioned this virtual bin folder. I think they are using on Linux, but we are running it on Windows computer. So you will have to go inside your virtual environment. 
and then you would have to go inside scripts and there you will find this so i am inside my virtual environment i'm going to do cd scripts and it is active when you will run this activate command you will see that virt is at the start of your command prompt so it means that every command that you will run from now on would be run under your inside your virtual environment and not on your local computer right so it says now install flask now install pip install flask version copy go here paste so this is all happening under inside your virtual environment and not on your local computer so we'll say view the installed libraries with pip free so we'll write pip freeze these are so it has installed click flask it's dangerous ginger markup safe and work safe these are all libraries installed by flask so now we'll have to save the output from the pip freeze to a file name requirement.txt the file this file is responsible to tell elastic beanstalk to install libraries during the deployment so we'll write pip freeze requirements.txt it's done now we'll create a flask application create a new text file in this directory named application.py it says that we'll create an application that we will deploy using elastic beanstalk we'll create a hello world restful web service we'll create a new file in this directory named application py with the following content so let me just copy it and under eb flask i'm going to create an application.py file so i'm going to go inside directory eb flask and i'm going to create a new file application.py remove this txt extension yes it's a python file edit it i'm using notepad plus plus you can use any text editor close it go back i have created application.py file with this code this code so as an as a devops engineer you, sh you should know coding but if you do not know coding you can have the python developer or a flask developer to create this code to deploy a hello world restful web service and you can deploy it on elastic beanstalk using this following the procedure that we are following in this video you will go back it says by adding the application dot debug equal to true before running the application debug output is enabled in case something goes wrong so in the code they have mention application dot debug equal to true application dot debug equal to here it is it says setting debug to true enables debug output if anything goes wrong it says run application dot py with python so you have to be inside the eb flask folder under eb flask but we are inside of a virtual environment so you will say python application dot py run this debug mode on restarting with set so it is all doing so i can access this url my local address in the browser to see how it is going http i have opened a new private window i'm going to paste that url hello world this is a restful web service append a username to the url to say hello to someone specific so if i'm gonna say ashish 
हेलो आशीष राइट बैक सो यू कैन डू इट लेट मी गो बैक टू दिस this is what we got now it says deploy your site with ebcli so this is running on your local environment as you see we are running under this virtual so these are the logs the reason we we turn debug.application equal to 2 these are the logs that you are getting right so i'm going to press control c to quit it i'm the application is still running but the logging is quit i am inside my virtual environment so this application you have deployed in your virtual environment now you'll have to deploy it on an aws elastic beanstalk right so it says you have added everything you need to deploy your application to it your project directory should now look like this okay let's check it so i am inside eb flask i have virtual application dot py requirement dot under eb flask under i have the eb flask scripts i have this oh let me copy paste it again i pip freeze requirement dot txt i ran inside the virtual folder i should have ran it under eb flask so my directory should look like this so it says the virtual folder however is not required so this v this virtual environment folder is not required because when you will deploy this application onto the aws elastic beanstalk it will create its own virtual environment on the elastic beanstalk it will create its own application it will create its own uh, environment onto the elastic beanstalk like we created in the previous videos so we do not need this so there is a command line that you can use dot eb ignore so it says uh, to minimize the size of the source bundle that you upload during deployment add an eb ignore file that tells the eb cli to leave out the virtual folder eb dot ignore file so i'm going to create one eb dot ignore file eb flask eb ignore let me create a new file i don't know let me check it come back now to create an environment and deploy your flask application initialize your eb cli repository with the eb enit command so it's eb initialize minus p python you can mention the python version or it will pick up the version by its own default so it flask it is the name of the application you can name it any region and uh, region my region is us east 1 because i am in northern virginia 1 let's see how it goes application flask tutorial has been created so if i go here refresh it see i have a flask tutorial application created so this is the application I, i have not created environment inside it i've done it through command line so it says you can run eb init again to configure the default key pair i don't want to run it now i will create an environment for this application you can do it manually you can do it through command line so i will do eb create flask env it will take its time to initiate this command come on okay creating application version archive this you mentioned i have not mentioned the python version here but it has picked up the version by on its own now it will uploading my artifact this virtual artifact that i created here this one it has created dot git ignore by its own it has created this dot elastic beanstalk now it will copy paste the entire content here and then it will deploy it to my amazon see still uploading i'm going to pause the video and come back so environment creation takes about 5 minutes depending upon the configuration and it creates the ec2 instance security group load balancer the load balancer security group auto scaling group the bucket in which your artifact code logs would be placed 
to use it with Elastic Beanstalk, the CloudWatch alarm that monitors the load on the instance in an environment. CloudFormation stack, it will Elast AWS Elastic Beanstalk uses the CloudFormation to launch the resources so that you don't have to configure it again and again and you can propagate the changes from the configuration stack. The domain name, it will give you a default domain name on its own. And then it will be done. We will just EB open and you'll see that this URL you will get the default URL from the Elastic Beast target. The restful API would do the same thing that it was doing on your local environment. Still uploading. So if you will see here, refresh it, you might see the window where and it will be creating an application. There. It, it is still working on it 50 percent so it is still uploading it when it will be completed it will create an environment i'll come back and show you see here it says the flux tutorial is the application it has deployed the artifact and it is environment is starting it is using the elastic beanstalk bucket for the environment creation it has created security group it has created the load balancer name so if i'll go here again environment and refresh it see it has created the health status is pending but it has created my see loading so it is creating create environment is starting i'm doing it from the EBCLI, the pip commands, not done anything on the console. We have just ran the commands on the command prompt and checked it on the console. The environment is starting. See this it's starting. Now it has creating the auto scaling policy, the auto scaling group. It is successful. Let me see if it is done or not. E graded. So I don't. It is still creating the auto scaling group. It has completed, but with error. So let me type in EB open. Search. It. It is not deployed successfully. Environment. Command fail on initial complete 60 seconds ago took two minutes. Causes overall degraded application deployment failed with exit status one. Deploy.py failed. Go here again. Come here. So, like it failed. If you want to up, if it failed and you want to deploy it again, you can browse to that package again. So let's say mine was uh, it's stored here, here flask, and if, if this is the file, you can upload this package file again and deploy it, and it will take care of the deployment on its own. You don't have to do it again and again. So this is the URL. Let me open it again. It's not. So there was so you got the idea how it will be done. So I'm I'm happy to show you this video. I will deploy many more apps like this using AWS Elastic Beanstalk. In future, we'll also cover how to deploy it using Docker, using the Elastic Kubernetes service or the Azure Kubernetes service or the Kubernetes. And then we'll see how the role of the Jenkins get played. So do not forget to subscribe to this channel. And share the videos if you have any feedback, any queries mentioned in the comment section. I'll see you again till next time. Have a great day.